Hi, Joe Cerrone. I'm going to show you how to draw this front door and back door. To get started, we're going to download the title block from the B-Size architectural file. This is located in D2L under Lab 1. Download and open. And so once we have the title block open, we're, you're in paper space. And you can tell you're in paper space because it has a right triangle like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our drafting settings. And so we can click on this little swatch here. And I like to have the menu bar on. I'll disable it. And then I'll re-enable it, show menu bar. And then we're going to take a look at which layer we're going to work on. We're going to work on the furniture layer. And then we're going to go over to model space. And so we'll click on model space and we can see that we already have uh, a grid enabled. And let's check our settings for drafting settings under tools. And our drafting set settings are for a six inch snap and a one foot grid. Polar tracking is enabled and object snap is off and I'm going to enable that and turn that on. So with those settings then we can take a look at our drawing and see what we're going to do with that. So if we take a look at the exercise we're basically going to draw six feet eight inches by three feet eight and then we're going to use the offset command to create these other features for the door and then we'll go through and we'll dimension it. So we'll get started. I am going to turn on line weights and line weights make the lines easier to see and so when we go into our settings here on the cheeseburger we want to have the line weight button enabled and then we want to have that on. And so we'll start off with a line. And if I zoom in, you can see that the cursor is snapping. And so I'll pick a point and then I'll drive that up. And this green line is called a polar tracking line. And I'll draw a line six apostrophe eight. You don't have to put the inch symbol like that. Inches is the default and as long as polar tracking is on it'll draw that line at that length. And then we'll track over to the right and we'll type in three feet eight. We'll track down this way and we'll type in six feet eight. And then we'll go back to the point of origin. You can either just bring it over there, click on it, We're going to use the offset command and what we're going to do is we're going to offset this line four inches and then we're going to offset that two inches, eight inches and I think what we're going to do is we're going to build this rectangular shape down here and then we'll build the other ones up from above it. Offset command is located right here and I'll select offset and then I'll type in the value. So if you hit the down arrow here you have through erase layer. We're going to use the default, which is going to be distance. And then we could change it to these other two. And so the distance is going to be four for four inches. And then I'm going to select the line and then the side. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to repeat the command offset. And this time I'm going to offset it eight. And I'm going to offset this bottom line here. And then you can either offset it above it or below it. And so we'll go above and then we'll hit enter. Now if you right mouse click you can repeat the offset command again and then what I'll do is I'll create the offsets to create the shape right here. And so what I've done is I've offset eight inches, I offset four inches, and then I'm going to offset two feet and this kind of box in the shape. Uh, 
offset. The amount will be two feet. And then the next amount will be 16 inches. And then we're going to trim these. Now there's a couple of ways that we can shorten these lines. We can use trim or we could use fillet with a radius of zero. We're going to use trim. And trim, if you hover over these commands long enough, they'll give you the help screen. And the help screen will help you use that command or you can hit the F1 key. But what I like to do when I use the trim key is I like to select the trim command, then hit enter, which makes everything a cutting line. And then as you hover over these different entities, it'll show you what's going to be removed. So it's very visual. And then what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll offset one inch, excuse me, two inches to create the panels. So I'll say offset to enter. And now we can start to kind of crank through this line side, line side, line side. And then if I zoom in here again, I can use trim, enter, make everything a cutting line, and trim these out. line command and you can go directly from one command to the other now you'll notice that I'm not able to kind of get the cursor over to this spot and it's kind of fighting me, me with these words that they're called a heads up display so I'm going to turn off the snap and now you'll see that it moves really fluidly and so snap being set at six inches doesn't work with these dimensions and so sometimes you have to toggle it on and off And the commands are set up that you can right mouse, left mouse them most of the time. Depends on what style you develop. And so that's the first part, the first panel. And the second panel is almost the same. It's one foot 10 inches instead of two feet. And then the third one is one foot. So what we could do is, I think we'll just make it again. We could do some copying in what's called stretching but at this point we'll save that for a different time once we get a few things running and so all I'm going to do is offset this line six inches and then I'm going to draw a line one foot ten inches from this endpoint O snap needs to be on and it needs to be set for endpoint and so with O snaps on I can drive that up and then I can type in the value, one foot 10, enter. I can drive it this way and I can then type in the value 16. And then I can drive it back here and just acquire that with an endpoint. And then I can go in, same construction technique, offset it two inches, line side, line side, trim, enter, zoom in by turning the wheel on the mouse, mouse the command, try again, there we go, pan by pushing the wheel on the mouse, escape, line, escape cancels out the commands, spacebar allows you to repeat the command, so if I hit the space bar there, or I hit the space bar here, it goes back to the line command. Same with the right mouse key. So there's a lot of ways to bring back the last command. And then the last panel is located four inches, and then it's going to be a one foot. So we'll offset that four inches. Like that and then we'll offset that 12 inches. There we go. And then we'll draw a line from this end point to this end point. 
Okay. Repeat. And there are faster ways to do this. But in the first class, I like to do repetitive basics. We could use fillet with a radius of zero. And then when I select these two geometries, it will fill it in. I could also go with fill it in multiple. And then I don't have to keep repeating the command. So another way to do the same thing. Spacebar, 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 repeats the last command. And that makes the front door. And then if I take a look at the drawing, the next one is four inches from the last. And so what I need to do here is to draw a line or offset a line four inches and then copy all of this over to here rather than to do them all over again. And so modify commands work on existing geometry. And so here's your modify tab. And so what I can do is I can draw a line from, from this point right here and then just track it out and you'll see five inches, eight inches. If I type four, it'll draw a line four inches. And then what I can do is I can copy and I can select this geometry, blue window, green window. Blue window selects everything it touches, excuse me, selects everything within the window whereas a green window selects everything it touches. And so I just want this. So I'm gonna use a blue window. I'll hit enter to end my selection. Base point, where I'm gonna copy it from. Destination point, where I'm gonna copy it to. Just like that. And it'll let you make as many copies as you want. So I'm gonna hit escape, and I'm gonna erase this geometry. And there's one more detail, which is this little door handle. And we can just offset that two feet, six inches, and then do this construction. And I'm going to use fill it with a radius of zero. And so that's our one door. We'll save it. Save it as your initials. And let's put it into a directory. I think I'll put that in the first week's class. So that's essentially the front part of the door. And then to put the dimensions on it, we'll go and we'll switch over to the dimension layer. And then we'll select linear dimension. And then I can go and I can select these endpoints and place that dimension there. The dimensions are slightly larger uh, than I thought they would be. And so I can tweak that a little bit if I want to by going into the dimension style. And I could go to the annotate tab and I can go to this down arrow here. And so here's my standard dimension style. And if I modify it on the fit tab, I can change this number from 24 to 48. 
And I believe that will make it quarter scale. Oops, wrong way. Should have gone to 12. Everything is a multiple of 12 because there are 12 inches in a foot. There we go. And so that cleans that up quite a bit. And then I'll go and I'll put on some of the other dimensions by saying linear dimension. And then I'll select this part here and here. Bring that out. Repeat. Zoom in. Select the endpoints. Zoom out. Place that. So with linear dimensions, you can click on them and create what's called a grip. And when you click on a blue grip, it becomes hot and then it allows you to make changes to it. So one of the things you can do is to move an existing dimension. And so the quickest way to get dimensions to look nice and neat is to place them on the drawing. And then if they're not exactly where you want them, you can click on them and then with a grip, you can then clean up your work. The important thing is that there is a dimension for all the details so that it can be manufactured. Okay, so we have most of the dimensions on. You want to make sure that you get all of them on there. A couple more over here I need to place. This one I don't need. The other ones I can just kind of clean up a little bit. And the closer you zoom in, the easier it is to see. So that's the one side of the door. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click on the floor plan tab, double click in the viewport, and then I'm going to type Z enter, A enter for zoom all. And what that'll do is that'll bring in the model space of the door. And then I'm going to set the viewport. This is what's called a viewport. And I'm going to set the viewport scale. Let's try a quarter of an inch equals a foot. That's a little too small, so we'll start to bump that up until it fills the paper adequately. We want it at a scale. Almost works, it's just a little too big. 
and it's about perfect right there. Once we have the scale set, we can lock the viewport, and then we can double click outside of the viewport, and then we can add the details. And so for example, the scale, we can come here, say three quarters of an inch equals one foot. Put on date. It's going to be CAD 117, 050, and right here, student name. All right. Be sure to set the scale in the little viewport down here so you can double click on this icon. There we go. All right, I'm going to end the video here, and then I'll make a second video to detail and draw the other side. So that completes this part of the door exercise. I'll save it one more time, and this ends this video.